Hey, great team. I just want to go over one more diagram in the PowerPoint. Sorry, let's just share. Yeah. Okay, so we were discussing that diagram in the previous PowerPoint, but I just want to show you this one because it's something that you need to understand and you must also watch the video. So over here, you can see the earliest of cells were very similar to bacteria. They were prokaryotic. So they had no membrane structures on the inside, okay? And then over millions of years, there was infolding of the membranes, creating this big transport surface area on the inside, and a nuclear membrane formed, and there you can see the ER development. And then other membranes would have developed to form the Golgi, et cetera. But now, the endosymbiotic theory is an explanation as to why um, eukaryotic cells have mitochondria with their own DNA and why plant cells have um, chloroplasts with their own DNA as well. So you can see here, this was an air, um, sorry, this is the original cell and it engulfed a smaller unicell which was able to use oxygen, okay? but it didn't digest it. For some reason, some of the mitochondria stayed. And you can see here that um, the actual unicellular organism only had one membrane, but then as it was engulfed by the cell membrane of the original cell, it then ended up having two membranes. And then also there's DNA inside here. So that, that allows us to say that it could have been a separate organism that lived independently. So a lot of eukaryotic cells have mitochondria. Well, eukaryotic cells have mitochondria, which allows us to say that they were the first organelles to develop using, um, using endosymbiosis. So endo, going into a cell, symbiosis, they now help the cell to work. So think about mitochondria. They um, can get glucose and oxygen from the cell because you know organisms breathe in oxygen, they break down food or they eat food, and then that glucose can be broken down to release energy for the cell. So it's a, it's a mutualistic type of relationship. Here's a cyanobacterium, a simple bacterium that would have contained chlorophyll, and it was also engulfed, and some of them weren't destroyed, and it ended, okay, so here it's got one membrane, and it ended up having two membranes, also having its own DNA and ribosomes, and therefore can make its own enzymes to control photosynthesis. All right, and you need to watch the video that I've uploaded, which also explains this process. 